And we're joined now by Senator Tina Smith of Minnesota. Thank you for joining us this morning, Senator. You know, we just heard what's happening in Arizona based on this Comstock law. You're leading an effort in the House to repeal it. Any prospects for success? Well, you know, first of all, I just want to say, George, that American women are not going to be conned by Donald Trump and his comments about abortion. We know that he is the one who is responsible for what's going on in Arizona and all over the country. So that's the bottom line, I think, as we think about the election coming up. With regard to the Comstock Act, okay, so this is a 150-year-old law that has been long relegated to the dustbin of history. And yet we can see Trump judges and even the United States Supreme Court raising this up uh, as a reason why people shouldn't be able to get medication abortion through the mail. So we have to pay attention to this and make sure that we are doing everything that we can to protect people's rights to make their own decisions about their own bodies and their own lives. Is there anything more that President Biden could be doing now with executive action to protect those rights? I'm really grateful that the president has done everything that he possibly can to protect people's rights. And he's fighting right now to make sure that the FDA's authority to make decisions about whether medications like mifepristone are, um, that, that, that their decision making is what rules and not the decision of some Trump judge from uh, Texas, which is what's happening before the Supreme Court right now. So I think that they're doing everything that they can. What we need to do is to win these elections so that we can put the protections of Roe um, in law. You, you say that the American people will not be conned by Donald Trump, but his position now is relatively clear, isn't it, saying this should be a state-by-state -state issue? Well, so think about what that means exactly. First of all, he said that he is the person who is proudly responsible for overturning Roe. That is what has caused all of this chaos and um, cruelty to the one in three American women who live in states where abortion is now basically banned. The other thing he said just a couple of days ago is that these state bans are working the way they should. So ask a woman in um, Arizona or Texas whether she thinks this is working for her, because for her, this isn't a political discussion. This is about her personal life and her decisions that she can make for herself about her own life. So I think that his position is totally clear. He is responsible for these abortion bans, and I think he's going to be held accountable for that come the election in November. Given what you think is the power of this issue uh, and everything else we've seen over the course of this election, how do you explain the fact that Donald Trump is either tied or ahead of President Biden in most polls? Well, you know, there's so much um, talk about these polls right now. I've been uh, working, you know, I started out in politics working as an organizer and going door to door talking to my community. And so I know that what matters is the choice that people are faced with when they actually cast their vote. And uh, that is what's going to make all the difference in the world. And on this issue, on the issue of abortion rights, the choice couldn't be more clear, right? You have Joe Biden and Kamala Harris who are fighting to protect people's freedom and Donald Trump who's responsible for taking it away. Senator Smith, thank you for your time this morning. Thank you.